Welcome to this weekend's edition of Mox News. I'm Andy Clifton. And I'm Sarah Cardena. Former White House correspondent Dan Lothian began his two-year lecture series on UTC's campus September 22nd. His first lecture touched on his beginning in broadcast and the time he spent working for CNN at the White House. Dr. Betsy Alderman helped initiate the lecture series after Lothian contacted her. Um, he reached out to me last spring and said he would like to do this. And I said, oh, wow, you know, to have somebody of his caliber in the communication department is an outstanding opportunity for our majors and our students in general to learn from somebody of, of Lothian's caliber. So. Students and professors who attended were interested to hear from an acclaimed reporter, even if they were unfamiliar with Lothian's work. I really didn't actually know much about him. I knew he was a reporter, and from what Dr. Alderman told me, she said that he knew what he was talking about, so that's why I decided to come listen to him. Nice talk. Uh, you know, it's, it's always good to hear from uh, somebody who's been there, done these things, share that wisdom, share that knowledge. So Dan Lothian will be returning four more times in the current school year and five times in the 2015-2016 year. His next visit will be toward the end of the semester. This week, UTC students were offered rape aggression defense training through a program called RAD, taught by Corporal Rebecca Talbert. RAD is the largest organization or program ever endorsed by the International Association of Campus Law Enforcement Administrators. RAD is a women's only self-defense program. Uh, here we have the basic program. Um, and they are based on the women's natural abilities, natural body shapes. Um, it's all based on gross motor skills. Warning stance. Back up. Caution stance. Participating Warning. students attended three classes in the UC Foundation Building Monday through Wednesday night from 6 to 9 p.m. each night. The students were taught basic physical defense techniques along with techniques tailored to their individual strengths. This is accomplished by we do scenarios and role play and we do a lot of brainstorming uh, during breaks in between classes. That way with someone with certain limitations or someone that may be able to kick better than they punch, we can kind of streamline and come up with um, better uh, options for them uh, that would help them defend themselves should they need it. Not only were students offered this individual physical training, they were also taught skills to develop and maintain a mi defensive mindset. Just because the class is in does not mean the practice and learning is over. If they want me to show up and come to a class where they want to have a session in the ARC or in a space that's available on campus, uh, we can meet up and we can practice. They also have their books and their information. Uh, so if they should forget something or need to recall a reminder, they have their books that they go back to and read back through it and it tells them step by step uh, what they need to do. Officials are urging Tennesseans to dispose of unneeded or leftover prescription drugs at drop-off locations around the state on Saturday. The event is part of National Prescription Drug Take Back Day and is aimed at fighting prescription drug abuse. You need to remove personal information from original containers before taking them to police and sheriff's departments participating in the drop-off. More than a thousand people die in the state every year from drug overdoses. Fall is here as of Monday evening. Showers are probable for the start of the week, but temperatures remain steady for UTC's homecoming week. Mox News weather reporter Courtney Myrick has your forecast. Hey Mox, Courtney Myrick here with your Mox Eye weathercast. We've been seeing some beautiful mid-80s weather, but there may be a possibility for some showers this weekend. I'll let you know in your seven-day forecast coming up next. Taking a look at your weather headlines, we're looking at a dry start to your weekend with showers developing around Sunday. With the rain on Sunday, you're going to see a wet start to the week ahead with showers really dominating your seven-day forecast. Normal highs for this week are around 80 and lows around 59. Our yearly rainfall average is 31 inches, and right now we're 7.44 inches below that average. So those wet days ahead will help that a little bit. A record high for this week was 95 degrees back in 2010, and the record low was 36 back in 1967. So our temperatures right now are pretty nice. Looking at your weekend, Friday and Saturday will be averaging in the low 80s with clear, beautiful skies, so that's a great start to the weekend. On Sunday, you're going to see those temperatures dip down a couple degrees with that possible chance for rain rolling through the area. All of those rainstorms starting Sunday and rolling through Tuesday will keep those temperatures at 80 and below. Sunday has a 40% chance for some rain, but the day to break out the rain jackets and rain boots will be Monday. After the rain clears up a bit on Tuesday, Wednesday will be a nice relief, partly cloudy skies throughout the day and a high of only 80. 
Thursday is when the rain is expected to come back, but it's still a low chance, so I'll make sure to keep you updated throughout next week. All right, Mox, that was a look at your weather for the weekend and the upcoming week. I'm Courtney Myrick with Mox News. In light of UTC's homecoming next week, Jane Holder, Director of Alumni Affairs, shared what's to be expected for this exciting week. With Mox Busters as the theme, the fun will begin on Monday with a pep rally at 11.50 a.m. at Chamberlain Pavilion. Tuesday night, Lip Sync, a popular event each year, will take place in the McKenzie Arena. On Wednesday, there will be a variety of field games taking place, followed by a movie night at Chamberlain Pavilion. The Greek Step Show will take place on Friday this year. Also, a new event to look forward to this year is the Spirit Run. Um, Andrew Clark, who works in our office, was just very enthusiastic about getting this together. We have a great committee made up of faculty and staff and students and alumni, and we just thought this was the year to do it. There's so much enthusiasm about our university and football team this year, so we're going to do the Spirit Run that our office is sponsoring, that we encourage all alumni and students to participate in. It's a family event. It will be held on campus at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning. Tailgating begins at 1 p.m. next Saturday before the mocks take on the VMI Cadets. UTC held their annual job fair this Wednesday. The job fair had a great turnout and over 88 companies attended. The job fair gave students a chance to meet potential employers and gain information about different job opportunities in the Chattanooga area. Regional's Bank Financial Service Specialist John Little said career fairs are a great way to showcase your personality to potential employers. I expect students to get um, a basic understanding of how HR and hiring works. Uh, career fairs, as you know, are, are vital to the success of landing a job. Students took advantage of this opportunity and came well prepared with their resume and asked the employers many questions pertaining to their companies. UTC student Larissa Hofstraw said that she was able to target companies beforehand to see which companies had open positions she was interested in. I think it's great. I think we should definitely continue. I think it really provides a good link for students and reaching other professionals and stuff and having that connection in a place that's like very more, like students are more comfortable here. So I think it's great. UTC will be holding another career fair in the spring this semester. It has been scheduled for February 4th. Many different cultures were represented this week during the International Festival. The event was sponsored by the Multicultural Center and other organizations on campus. In the beginning of the event, students from different parts of the world presented flags from their countries. That was just the start of the festivities. There were many diverse activities for students to enjoy at the event, such as making origami figures, henna tattoos, face painting, learn Arabic writing, and a photo booth. I'm glad to be here. This is a very beautiful event over here as international. We're glad that we meet uh, other nationality and we feel uh, honored to be here. Students were also exposed to music and dance performances from around the world. The purpose of the International Festival was to bring students together despite where they come from. The Office of Multicultural Affairs, we know that there's such a rich culture in UTC's campus and so we just feel like it's our duty to let students and let staff and let everyone As the night progressed, students began to embrace the many cultures they learned throughout the event. The International Programs Office is encouraging students to venture into the world and study abroad. They hosted a number of organizations at the fourth annual Study Abroad Fair this Thursday. Assistant Director Kristen Labs hopes students of all majors will consider studying abroad. We're hoping that they learn that study abroad is not just for language majors, it's for everybody. Um, even athletes and science majors. Uh, we're hoping that they'll come by and talk with people who are here from off campus. We've invited some visitors that represent study abroad organizations that we use and gather more information, find out what their opportunities are, and then follow up with our office to do some advising and find the best fit program for them and for their major. Senior Satonia Thomas went to Spain this summer and shared her experience. I got to do stuff that I planned for and stuff that I didn't plan for, but I feel like I was really immersed into the culture and in, into the European Spanish experience. Any student interested in studying abroad can visit their office in the second floor, 545 Oak Street. Students, this is the final reminder that the Sequoia Review will be taking submissions for the issue they have coming up this year. 
If you have literary works you would like to see published, whether it be fiction, nonfiction, poetry, or visual art, the deadline is this coming Tuesday, September 30th. You can do this by going online to sequoiareview.com. That does it for this edition of Mox News. Thank you for joining us. Check out our videos uploaded throughout the week to YouTube. We air on the UTC TV channel 2.1. So tune in and have a great weekend from all of us here at Mox News.